Let's see. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Justin Hattendorf. I'm the product design manager at Entopology. And today I'm going to show you how to make a file, set a file up for mass customization for consumer products using Entopology platform. So um, in this example, um, I'm sure I um, basically just imported a mesh with uh, a bunch of holes in it. So as you can see, there's, there, there's a ton of perforation. Uh, you can see there's a lot of displacement. It's not, not a very smooth surface. So what I'm going to show you is how to place a flat logo that I've imported from another CAD program and basically place this on this like rough surface and flatten it out so it fits nicely in here. Um, but also set it up so I can use any um, imported surface or imported logo that I want. So to get started, the first thing I did was just imported a mesh. So um, I made this file for an existing or for a, from a previous demo. Um, it's basically just a Bluetooth speaker. We have a top half and a bottom half. Um, and in this top path, you can see there's the, the entire thing is textured all the way across. So this is going to be something that's, that happens in a lot of MTOP files where you maybe create a lattice, but, and, and it's hard to place text on. So this is in this example, we're going to show how to take an imported logo, place it on here and smooth it out. So everything fits nicely. So after your import, basically the next thing you do import your logo that you want to import. So um, I've extracted the path here as a variable so that we can change this really quickly in the future. So with that logo um, and a position, um, we can move that to a new place or a new place on the surface. So um, here you can see there's a plane here that will take this the existing logo um, move it and then move it from this plane to this plane. Okay. So if I preview that, you can see that I've moved the logo to the center of this um, perforated mesh. Um, but you can see here it's intersecting this mesh quite a lot. And there's still, yeah, this wouldn't work. We wouldn't be able to just place this logo on. We'd have to smooth this out so it fits nicely on top. So um, first thing I'm going to have to do is, I guess, take a section of that body. So what that means is with, with the same plane that as the uh, position here, um, I can take a section, the section, if I section the body, basically it looks like this. Um, sorry, once. Yeah. Let's try this again. Yeah, basically it looks like this. You can see the end top logo here. Um, it's, yeah, the field for this is continuous all the way through. So the, the reason we want to take, take a section of that is so we get an infinite field. So no matter where I am vertically, we still get that nice, like, print of the logo that I've imported. So we're going to use that to next fill the shape. So we have a ton of holes in this imported mesh here. So what I'm going to do is just use an offset based off of that original end top field, or like end top logo field, and just fill all those holes using offset. So in the offset, I've included a ramp block. So that will give us the ability to control really nicely the way, or like how far away from this original logo. Um, you can see the original logo's here. Um, so how far away do these holes start to get filled? So right now I have 20, but if you wanted this to go be much larger, you could say like, I don't know, 50. Um, and what this would do is then update. And there we go. You can see it's much, much further out. Um, if, like if you wanted to be smoother all the way to the edge of the surface. Um, so you can make this smaller, bigger. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on the design. So I'm going to go with 20 because I know that 20 milliliters from that logo is looking nice for this original import. So once you have the shape filled, the next thing you're going to want to do is flatten the shape. So what that means, it looks a little bit like um, look this load. It's a little bit like this. So yeah, so you can see I took this original like super lumpy 
offset surface. Like the purpose of that was to fill the holes. Next step is to flatten it out a bit. So the way I'm doing that is with a mix block. So the mix here is taking the taking the original offset shape and blending that with a box. So you can see the box here extends quite a lot over the surface. Um, it doesn't really matter what the, the size is. I'm really just looking for the, the depth here. Like this is what I want my new cross section to be. So by mixing it just at, the, at this logo location, we can flatten it out just in a small area of this mesh. So it doesn't really matter the roughness of the mesh or anything like that that I imported. By mixing those two implicits, I can keep a really intentional surface where it's like nice and flat. And I, because I've designed this box in and top, I know exactly what I'm going to get when I mix it here. So as you can see, the section cut through this is, um, yeah, you can see it's nice and flat through here. So we have a nice flat solid surface. And then the last step for this then is to just add a little bit of definition around this logo. So what I've done here is one more offset. You can see the logo is pressed into this that I've imported here. So I have, oops, I have the original logo here repositioned. And so now this, this logo that I, that's positioned on this figure bill is now placed perfectly on the surface. It's flat. And with, with the additional offset, it's nested in. So this would be useful if you wanted to do like an inlay or just to add a little bit of definition. So if you wanted to, you could union this and make one, one continuous printed surface. Um, but I'm just going to keep this separate um, uh, as if this is like an inlaid geometry here. So after all of this is set up, um, this is the fun part. So all you have to do to set this up for customization is change the file. So I've exposed this variable here, so it's super easy to just upload another file. So if I wanted to say, like, instead of the NTOP logo, I use NTOP text, convert that to implicit, and then the notebook should just run. So I've imported a mesh for all of these, um, so we have a nice solid surface here. You can see it automatically updates here. And yeah, I didn't have to do any work. It just works automatically. As I've already said, like I've already said, fill the holes 20 millimeters away, place the logo, and flatten it out and indent it. So it works pretty nicely, pretty fast. Um, let's say I wanted to keep the sent-off text, but I wanted to move the location. All I have to do for that is just move this plane. I can move it anywhere on here. And you'll see this will update the location of the end top. And now it should update all the flattening. And there you go. So you can. So this is really useful for mass customization, but it could also be useful for um, placing labels or in any sort of situation where you want to place text or a logo on any complex surface. So yeah, with implicit modeling, it makes it super easy to mix between those two shapes. So. I'm going to undo, just reposition that back. Um, so it also works, like, try a couple other files. Also works with, I don't know, I made a, I made a file of my name. <laughs> this might be an application where you might want to set up an NTOP file to take a bunch of names and customize mm -hmm. it however you want, or upload text. So this would be really easy to configure um, and work for any text file. So. The last example, so I made something pretty special. I wanted to show the complexity that you could handle with this kind of thing. Um, so I made a graphic of, let's see, I made a graphic of my dog. <laughs> you can see here I have a graphic portrait of my dog. Super complex stuff. 
um, you can see it's like not text. It's a, it's a mesh that's much more complex than text. Um, but this hand, the file actually handles it just fine. So I don't know if you want any pet personalization or any any sort of personalization, you can upload any any mesh. So it could be any graphic that's converted to a mesh into NTOP, and it'll add it just like it added the text. So yeah. Well, let's see, we have a couple questions. Is it possible to skip the logo chain, um, automate the file for the logo-based inputs from a separate sheet? So we today we don't support text in, in NTOP, but you could definitely, okay, so you could definitely skip the logo chain. So all that this file needs is a different mesh and it'll do all the repositioning and you could even include scaling and everything in here if you wanted to. So so yes, you could you could script this using the command line interface, and basically you could run through a whole folder of of, of these mesh models, and it would run it should work just fine. Um, yeah, the only thing that's missing from like a, like complete end to end mass customization uh, with text file would be um, importing text. So if there, so for that I would recommend. Yeah, doing your meshing in another another CAD platform and then setting it up with a folder and it should run it should run end to end pretty easily. Let's see. There's, I think that's. Let's see. I think that's all. So so yeah, that is how. The beginnings of how you'd set this up for a mass customization project. So, yeah. Um, well, thanks so much, um, and have a good day, everyone. Bye.